So welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to game number one of Hidden Cup number two. Hidden Cup number two is a huge Age of Empires event. We don't know who the players are. We just know there's 16 participants and they're playing with popular hero names. I will be using Capture Age to cast this event entirely. And I'm really excited here. The game one is Arabia. And we have Rolf the Ganger in the blue. He's playing as the Mayans. As we zoom out here a little bit, you can see in the red we have Blood of the Hun. He's playing as the Chinese, not the Huns. Uh, funny enough, Rolf the Ganger was the one who selected Huns. <laughs> so Blood uh, will not get his Huns. Uh, but this is a fascinating matchup. I talked about this a lot in the qualifiers. I talked about how Mesosivs are so dominant, and I think it's best to globally ban Mesosivs. So we have Rolf the Ganger choosing the Mesosiv of Mayans and already running out here to lame. And this is what he can see. Oh, I'm sorry. This is... <laughs> this is what he can see, right? There we go. I'm new to this, all right? Just, just get the I'm news in the chat. And he can see the pig, and he's going out for the lame already. So no surprise. No surprise. I talk about this all the time. I say go Mezzo game one if you can if you can get it. And if you get it, go for the lame. And already, Blood of the Hun, I know pig, and MBL confirmed, right? This has to be MBL. No other player in the game would lame. Uh, free pig for Hulf the Ganger. Very nice aggressive start for him. And uh, we're going to zoom out a little bit and talk about the maps as this pig gets brought in. I don't think this player is going to struggle at all. So... The map is really solid for a Mayans map. You have three golds here. You can wall here, you can wall here, and you can wall here. I mean, this is... Jeez Louise, this is probably as good a map you're going to get in the tournament entirely. All three golds could be walled in, the stones could be walled in, and Mezzosivs tend to wall anyway. So that's that's definitely something that Rolf the Ganger is going to like. Uh, then we have Blood of the Hun here, and Blood of the Hun's map, his map isn't bad either. Um, I think the important thing for Chinese, though, is that you have safe stones. This stone could be a concern, but he's pushing in his deer to make up for the fact that he lost his pig. And now we could, he could always wall on this side. Uh, I mean, he, he could also wall in two of his golds. I think the concern might be the elevation, possibly. So yeah, Viper confirmed, because uh, this must be Viper, because he has the map packs in the blue. You have Viper for the first set of the day. And then... Uh, I, I I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you we've gathered anything from Blood of the Hun yet. But uh, anywho, guys, I'm so excited. I just want to say thank you, everyone, for showing up already. And if you're seeing this set on YouTube, it's important to know that the games will go to YouTube, but they won't all be on YouTube uh, within like immediately after they finish. So if you're seeing this best of five on YouTube right now, we're probably on day two uh, already on the Twitch stream. I know that you guys have obligations and you might not be able to keep up with everything, uh, but if you'd like to stop by the Twitch stream and break some records this weekend with me, uh, twitch.tv slash t90official. And also while I have the time after I introduce the games, I just want to say thank you to the Capture Age team for working with me and working with Dave to make sure that we have Capture Age working. Uh, if there are a few problems possibly with Capture Age, remember it is in alpha, uh, the team has done an excellent job getting everything set up, and I'm sure you guys have seen on the YouTube videos how cool this can be. So this is a fascinating wall-off here for Bleda. Fascinating wall-off. Uh, I guess he hasn't scouted this, right? So, having not scouted that, he's going for the safer wall. And he couldn't scout it because he lost his pig. Now, I think Chinese is a risky game one pick. I, I can agree that Chinese can be a strong civilization. It can be a strong civilization in certain situations against Mesosivs. But I feel like if you don't encounter those situations, which Blood of the Hun already has not, then it could be complicated. He doesn't have a safe back stone because you definitely need that to build up towards a castle eventually to protect your eco. And then you don't have a pig. So regardless, uh, you could see the players are on the way to Feudal Age. Now, if I click this, boom. If I click this, I could take you right to where that research is taking place. So Rolf is on his way to Feudal Age from this TC. And no surprise, there's a wall off here. No surprise, we have the barracks. You can see the militia are on the way. This is your typical man-at-arms rush, guys. And now the eagle's running forward. Remember, the eagle is a bit weak. But the eagle has scouted the wall off red and... 
I mean, this is a lot of walling to do now, and the walling's also not walling in the gold. And poor Bleda, man. He's trying his best to find where his opponent is, but he can't find him. He's gone the wrong way. And so this is all a result of basically not choosing a mezzotive. I The eagles have such See? strong line of sight. It's so easy to find things. It's so easy to lame. Um, does anyone remember what the global bands were? I think, hold on, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to the global bands real quick. I wanna see, we should be able to do this anyway. The global bands were Italians and Malay, yeah, so he could've banned Mayans, he could've, they could've banned Aztecs. Surprised, I think he has Aztecs in his Civ draft, so. Alright chat, thank you for helping me out. <laughs> so, here come the man-at-arms. There is a hole here still. So there will be man at arms in a moment, and if Blood is expecting this, Blood could build a gate. Oh, he's going with the quick palisades. Yes, yeah, something tells me this is going to be difficult to keep up. The man at arms will kill the palisade wall. Now this eagle isn't on full HP, but he could annoy the villager. And if he gets a couple hits in early, Blood needs to hit the house. Blood can't hit the house because the eagle's there. Are you kidding me? Oh, Blood of the Hun! Oh my God! Doubt confirmed. Ouch. That was not pretty. That was not pretty. He had the wall off. The wall off was there. The wall off was set. And then he tried to place a house, but his own villager was standing over the foundation. And so that's that's basically not good, right? It's not good. You're giving the Mayan player time to wall. Uh, already you've lost a villager. Fortunately, Chinese should, should be floating a villager to more. Uh, against most civs, but not necessarily against Mayans, because they start with an extra bill. The scouts are on the way, and we'll have a few skirmishers for Blood of the Hun. But he has to leave his berries, and Rolf the Ganger is looking good. He's done so much damage already with just a few units on the map. And then he should have no problem getting his walls up. So in the first Hidden Cup, I didn't put... And I'm not saying this to defend my my poor guesses. I didn't put as much time trying to analyze and, and truly guess who the players are. I really want to challenge myself to see what I can get in this hidden cup. And and you know what? This is good for Blutta. Blutta, he doesn't lose another villager. He built that gate there and Rolf ran right into the TC fire. And uh, Blutta cleans that up. Now, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to tell along with me, but I feel like I can tell when you have a laggier game. Um, and this is a recorded game, so it's going to be more difficult to tell, but a good indicator is if players don't try to do the itty-bitty micro moves. If they don't try and do those, then it could be because we have one player in, I don't know, China and another in, in Europe. So, uh, I, it felt to me there, when I saw Blue's units run in and he didn't really try and micro much, they just kind of died. felt to me there like there might have been some lag. The games... Uh, were played already. They've played, been played over the last two weeks. So day one, two, and three. They've never been seen before, but the games were played. Uh, and then the final day will be live, but it's just something to, to try and think about. We have a lot of archers here. A lot of archers in these archery ranges. And normally, Scouts to Skirms is very good against archers, but if you just... If you let the archers run forward without scouting them, Bleda, you're going to have some problems. And here comes Rolf, placing that house foundation behind. Now, that house foundation's not going to be enough. There's still a hole here, and it's still a hole here. So, this is a bit risky. And, okay, the archers are actually getting Bleda's reinforcements. Now, guys, I think I showed you this in the YouTube video last night. But it's possible that you haven't seen the YouTube video yet. Shame. Um, so, I'm going to show you once we get into a big fight here. I can show you the HP bars for both armies and it shows the collective HP for the armies on the left and the amount of numbers so you see the little the little dot there it says nine so that means there's nine blue archers it's pretty cool I can also select the wolf I can select Gaia too if I want oh sorry buddy okay so blood gets out to his gold he did build a tower nice and early and he's running away this is this is risky business right now the Mayan player is making a lot of archers, and Bleda doesn't have that many skirmishers out to deal with it. Now, he will make the skirmishers. You can see the fletching upgrade is on the way. Oh, we have another wolf! The wolf's revenge! 
Yeah, and once the skirms get some armor, they, or even without the armor, they could consider taking some fights here. And this is where Hrolf needs to be careful. And normally lions might consider a few eagles in this situation, but he can fight this because these, these uh, skirmishers don't have the armor yet. So it's all down to the micro, and again, I'm trying to determine who can this be. <laughs> I mean, all 16 players can micro. <laughs> Except maybe one, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna talk about that, alright? He might be out there watching. This is not good for Rolf. He has all of these archers here, he needs to hide. And I believe he's doing that now. He'll send his archers back inside. Now, is he gonna fail with a house wall? Monday? Oh, it's a gate. I mean, he's making life awkward for himself, right? I think the lack of just three or four eagles really hurt him. I'm surprised, actually. He's had the gold for it. He's making an eagle warrior now. But despite that, I still think he'll be fine, but he's made life a little bit more complicated for himself. And uh, just going to switch over to Bleda's point of view now. Bleda, he's getting closer, and Bleda also clicks up. So Bleda has done well, considering that Villager lost at the start. This is a close game. Very closed off map for both players. And now we have a barracks. Is this something that Bleda sees? Bleda cannot see that barracks there. That's fascinating to me. You know, Rolf the Ganger seems a bit overwhelmed by all of this. If you want to go Eagles, you should have built the barracks a bit earlier. Yeah, so I see a few questions. Of people are curious what the percentage and the value means at the bottom right. So the value is the cost of all the military on the map. And then the percentage is the amount of gold costs associated with it. And this really shows you the strength of Scout the Skirms, doesn't it? Because 65% of the army for Hrolf is gold, and only 4% for Blood of the Hun, and yet Blood of the Hun is able to, to hold here. Uh, this gets slightly more complicated in Castle Age, but because he's going to need some knights, he'll need some more gold units to deal with this. But Scout the Skirms in Feudal Age is, is the best combo. Because it's you get so much value out of it. Guys, thank you for the birthday wishes. Thank you for the belated birthday wishes. Um, I I see some incredible alerts on the left. All came in right when the game started. I'm gonna get to you guys. Thank you. All right. So Castle Age, Eagle Warrior on the way, and if Blue can afford it, probably Crossbowman as well. Now the thing about Mayans is they have an incredible boom behind any pressure they go for. So. I'll zoom out here, and I think a TC here and a TC here would be great for blue. Because this one, you can secure the wood. This one, you get the stone and the wood. And now we see Hrolf pushing out across the map. Now, the eagles should destroy these skirmishers. What Bleda the Hun will want is knights, and here come the knights. Bloodlines and scale barding. Um, also getting Bodkinara and elite skirmishers, so this is going to be a fight he wants to take. Now, the eagles don't have that many upgrades, right? And again, I can show you all the units, I can show you the amount of collective HP, you'll see that with the knights in here, there's so much more HP in the composition for Blood of the Hun. And I think this hill's going to be a decider, I think whoever controls the center of this map is going to have the lead. Um, and Hrolf the Ganger, I mean, the guy stole a pig, and he killed that villager, but he hasn't had a lot to show for that. I mean, since then, he's, he's lost control over this. And so I think the thing to remember is that Mayans can easily use these crossbows in the Imperial Age. They can easily use these eagles in the Imperial Age. For the Chinese, sometimes there's a hard switch away from what they're currently making. And to get through that transition, they'll need a lot of map control. To get through that transition, uh, they will need to get the stone and normally get some castles up. Now, if you want to know just how many town centers someone has, you can look on the right-hand side and it will show you the progress bars when the villagers are being created. Uh, so at the moment you can tell there's just one town center for red, and blue's not actually producing out of his TCs. Um, to, there we go, now he's producing out of one of his TCs. Uh, this one he's not, so uh, blue's having some production problems, though he is slightly ahead in vills, and he has a lot of eagles now, and now that the eagles have all of these upgrades, with the crossbows in combination, I think that this composition is probably stronger for Rolf, and if he fights this now, it's going to be close. I think this is getting better for Hull, for sure. And that's a lot of knights. That is a lot of knights. They're going to toggle over the HP bars. So, Bleda's HP bars are red. Blue's HP bars are blue, of course. 
And it seems to me like there's more blue in this army now. So, Rolf the Ganger, he has that slight eco lead. He needs to sort out his vill production, but he's pushing back out, and if he takes his hill, he will love his situation. And I would love to see a monastery for him now. A monastery would be good for night conversions, but also to heal his eagles after every single fight. And yet again here, I can show you. Now, the eagles are kind of disappearing now. So, that is better for Bleda, but with the reinforcements, Rolf might just be able to hold this. What a close game, though. What a close game. This is so insane. Um, the, the KD's fairly even. DeVille counts fairly even. I imagine Red is probably adding TC's now. Um, he is, yes. And he's also added a monastery. Or is in the process of doing so, so he can heal up his knights. And you know what? He's getting full upgrades. This guy's not messing around. He's getting iron casting. A lot of this has to do with the fact that he has the latest TC's. But it will get devastating if Blue goes Eagles and Pikemen, and that's exactly what he's doing now. Someone in the Twitch chat just said, I want you to raise my children. <laughs> can I decline? <laughs> no, thank you. You can keep your kids. That's kind of worrying, though. <laughs> that's kind of worrying. Eh, I'm not the parent police. Whatever. Do what you want with your life. Yeah, so, so Bleda is going to struggle against Pikeman and Eagle. Now, if you have, let's say, 10 Eagles and 10 Pikes versus 20 Knights, the 20 Knights will win. Knights are still 120 HP units. And now with Iron Casting, they have Insane Attack. Like, that's all well and good. But Pikemen are, are quite easy to create, and we'll see that value start going down a bit for Blue, because he'll create, be creating mainly Pikes, and the value will probably be very much higher now for red because he will need crossbowmen to kill the pikemen so again blue has that map control he already has one relic and I, I think this hill is going to be the decider and if you're if you're either of them i think you need to play heavy into castellage sometimes the mayan player will go for that faster imp but i think i think you need to go for that all in castellage here if you're chinese like really get map control before you even think about getting to the Imperial Age. The players are so close together, though. So if the players are this close together, it's going to make life complicated, but still. I think that's the way to go about it. We do have uh, three TCs now for Red. And thankfully for him, the right-hand side of his base hasn't really become a concern. And uh, here's a look at Blue's point of view. He does not see the TC until now. And now he sees the knights. Now he sees the... Oh, he's gonna fight this? Now he sees the monk? I'm surprised that he fought this, honestly. I guess the pikes do have a lot of upgrades. But I felt like underneath the TC fire, the pikemen would die pretty quickly. Uh, Red... I mean, I must be wrong on this, because both the pro players seem to be thinking that Blue's army's stronger here. I mean, it's it's definitely stronger in the open field, but I felt like right there, maybe Red could have considered taking a fight. Might might have been one of those where they're both unsure about it. Red maybe wanting to wait for his crossbowman. Another wolf! What would a T90 tournament be without a wolf, and what would a hill be without a siege workshop? Here comes Rolf to build the TC on that hill. I think I had Rolf winning this in my bracket. I, how many people in the Twitch chat did a bracket? Red got in here, actually. How did he get in? Oh, he must have ran right through here. He hasn't really killed anything yet, but he's in. Yeah, okay, so I'll have to look at my bracket afterwards to show you guys. This is good damage. I was just going to say that Bleda would normally want to be using the speed of his units, but it's tough because Blue has the walls up. But he kills a few villagers. He distracts Blue a bit. This is good damage. But how do you deal with this? How do you deal with this? I don't know if you do deal with this. I think you just have to let it be. And there's a castle for Rolf on the hill. And there's a castle here for Blood of the Hun. And Oh, Blood of the Hun! I think he can take this fight. He won't stop the castle. Okay, half of his knights aren't attacking. What are you doing, knights? Why are his knights not attacking? Is this some patrol bug? Yeah, I think if he takes his fight, he wins it. Unfortunately for him, a lot of the time there, his units were not fighting. So it could have been better. 
And he will clean up most of the pikemen, most of the eagles. And I'm waiting for the Imperial Age click for both of them. You'll see that Hrolf has a lot of gold in the bottom left. So he might consider buying Imp. Uh, and I'm not sure... Maybe Bleda... Ooh, nice micro from Bleda to get out of there. Okay. T90 Jinx. I'm sorry, Bleda. I didn't mean to do that to you. Curse the commentator. Uh, maybe maybe Red considers going Imp as well now instead of playing all the way in just to try and win this initial Treb War. Yeah, doubt confirmed. Doubt confirmed. Get those confirmed emotes out. And are you kidding me? Game one of the tournament, random seeding, and we have two players on the way to Imp within eight game time seconds of each other. Are you kidding me? The Vil counts close. 93 to 91. The military counts close. And this is going to start off with trebuchets for sure. And if that's the case, advantage to Rolf again because he'll have two castles on the hill to create trebuchets out of. Now, I like how Blood is trying to get some more value out of his military. And I like the same. I think that was probably a castle there. Sorry, I didn't get to see, but I like the same from Blue, trying to find some weak areas of their opponent's base. Uh, you do see Plumed Archers on the way now for Hrolf, so... Mass Plumed Archers are so devastating against other Archers like Chukunu and, and Arbalest. So it'll, it'll mean that Bleda can't really choose the Archer line. He might need to go the Skirm line. And things are looking a bit dicey in for Bleda's economy over here, and for the first time, that right-hand side of his map is really hurting him now. Did have time to wall that up, chose not to. And this fight is... Well, I mean, at the end of the day, Hrolf's going to continue to create plumes. I don't know if Bleda will continue to create knights, so... Bled is going with Chukunu. And this is looking better for Rolf. I like his position more. I like his unique unit more. I like Mayans more than Chinese, as I said at the start. And I'd just like to show you that this is now the third relic... Rolf the Ganger seems to be on the ball with his macro. He has pretty good scouting of the er other areas of the map. And he will start off creating trebs out of two castles. On the right hand side you can see that and confirm that. And might even get in here with the plumes. Oh this is going to be so good for Rolf. I mean he's pressuring over here. He'll get in with plumed archers over here. So in two areas he's hitting Bleda's economy. And he'll have the hill here. So he's, he's ahead in three different ways, and oh wow, Red redeeming himself there with that quick wall, or quick house. He needed that one in Dark Age, but still, I mean, the plumes are going to get in, and he doesn't have much of a response to that. And here come the trebuchets. Two to two. Is this another castle? It is another castle for Rolf. If red takes his hill, he can do so much. He can pressure from both sides. If blue takes his hill, it's the same. Pressure here and pressure here. Honestly, if blue kills these castles from red, I don't know if there's a lot that can really be done in Bleda's position. Like, the plumed archers here are already distracting red's economy a lot. Provided that blue still has two castles to create plumes, what do you have as Chinese against mass plumed archers at this stage of the game? The Chukunu, not going to be good enough. It would have to be Elite Skirman, and then that just opens up the possibility for Mines to go Eagles. So the damage is being done, man. The, the Chukunu are on the way back to defend. I'm not even sure the Chukunu will, will survive here if Blue plays this correctly. He can just run around. And Red does lose both of his castles. It's looking good for Hrolf here, guys. It's looking very good for Rolf. Good point from Strode in the Twitch chat. Yeah, Rams are always good, but does he have the eco for it? He does not, and he calls the GG. I mean, yeah, at this point, right, you don't have a lot of military. If you try and transition into anything, the Mayan player is going to beat you. And I think it was fairly obvious that this TC was about to die next, that Rolf would send in the plumes next, that Rolf would kill next. And I think this comes back to what I had said in game one. Because I said all the time in the qualifiers, it's too risky to not choose your Mesosiv on Arabia. Uh, Mesosivs are the best. Aztecs and Mayans are the best. There's no doubt in my mind. Even Incas is up there because they can lame and get such a big early advantage. And then if they're making archers and you make skirms, they can make eagles. 
You know, like, who cares the fact that they can't make knights? Massing eagles is so easy for them. So Blood of the Hunt has got to be kicking himself for not going with the Mesopic. I think the Mesopic is just a smart approach. But if you look back to the Civ draft here, guys, he does have that option because he has Aztecs in his draft. All right. So with Aztecs in the future, maybe he can get his victory. The score is now 1-0 for Krolf the Ganger. And in just a moment, we'll move on to the next game. I just want to pull up the achievements here, show you guys uh, what the statistics were like. It was a fairly close game, right? Uh, there we go. Sorry, I have, I don't know if you guys know what a stream deck is, but basically my control panel is slightly different. Uh, and the scoreboard seems to be over top. I can fix this though. That's right, I got this. Watch, you guys ready to see some live tech support look at that man i'm so talented i practiced four years to be able to fix that problem uh, all right 120 kills for blood that didn't really matter uh the mine eco well honestly the, there wasn't a lot of difference with the eco i think it was just how easy it is to take position with the mayans and we won't we won't waste much time here the statistics were so close with all the uptimes the game itself was quite close. Rolf got the win. Game number two coming up. Game number two will be on the home map for Blood of the Hun. Okay, so before we get started, it's actually good that I'm not paying attention to the view count because I'd probably be getting nervous. <laughs> um, can I can I get all my subs to throw some salutes to everyone? Welcome them to the stream. I know that there's new people here. My YouTube audience was saying that they wanted to get here. Um, at, so many people were saying that they wanted to see this go down live. So there's got to be a lot of new people. Uh, my community welcomes you. Whether you've been here for, for years or minutes, thank you guys very much for being here. Uh, thank you. Clint for the five dollar donation. He said, "Congrats on the casting overlay. In my opinion, it's way better than what they use for StarCraft 2. Uh, Nivita donated five dollars. Is asking about a co-caster. I'm offended because that's literally the only word. Is no co-caster. Like, is that really? That's all you have to say? Is my casting bad? I will have Slam co-cast with me later. Uh, Majestic donated one hundred dollars to the stream." He said, longtime YouTube watcher finally became financially stable enough to throw a few bucks. Man, Majestic's definition of a few is different than mine. He says, love your content and the community, even though I haven't played this game in over a decade. Majestic, thank you very much, dude. Hall, thank you. He said, greetings from YouTube. Thank you for all the hours of entertainment. Uh, Ziv gifted 20 subs to the stream. Luchador gifted a bunch. Blue Pill, thank you. Uh, quite honestly, guys, this... These four days are going to be so insane. I might miss some names, uh, but just know you guys mean the world to me. So thank you very, very much for being here to watch me do this. I love doing this. Um, I had put so much, so much time, thought, and, and effort and, and just everything over the last week trying to get things set up. And this is, this is just the beginning. The whole event is going to be crazy. Okay, so game number two will be either Cross or Rooster for Blood of the Hunt. He's obviously a water player because he chose those two maps. And we will begin shortly. The co-casting schedule is to have Slam cast the last two sets with me today. And then we will have Dave casting with me all day on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Streck donated a hundred bucks and said, you and my wife share a birthday. <laughs> oh, fun fact of the day. I share a birthday with some guy's wife. Thank you very much, Streck. Did you give your wife a hundred dollars though? I just need to know that. Hopefully she got more than me, man. Otherwise you have some relationship problems. All right, let's hop into the game. Let's see what we got here. Just loading up Capture Age and we are now in the game. All right, here we are, guys. Game number two, Hayden Cup number two. This is the first best of five in the round of 16. Uh, we will do four best of fives today for round of 16, and then we will do five tomorrow. Or five tomorrow, four tomorrow. Sorry, I can't count. 
And Rolf the Ganger obviously is a water player. He's using Malians for this, which is a huge surprise. Was not expecting that. Uh, and then we have Japanese for Blood of the Hun. So Blood of the Hun, as he lost game one. He's going to his home map now. And something tells me that this Rolf guy is not a great water player. Because, uh, first off, I don't see why you would choose Malians on this map. I forgot to look at the rest of his sieves remaining, but... Malian seems like kind of a weird pick. Uh, and he's also going out early for the lame when a lot of players would normally choose to go for... Well, look, look at the HP! Look at the HP! Thank you, Capture Age! Who's gonna win this? This is so important! Oh, okay, thank god. I would have been so frustrated for Red because he could have sent a villager this way a long time ago, and he didn't do that. And he kills the scout. Now... Okay, <laughs> there should be no restarts here, right? So, uh, if the players use their restarts, then we will not see them because we want to keep the action on the road. And Blood of the Hun, in all caps, says no lame 11. And Rolf says Tatic. Who is this? Get the T90 who's in the chat. Who are these people? Do you think Blood of the Hun is Chinese? I think Blood of the Hun is Chinese. I That's just a guess. I mean, I haven't seen enough yet, but something tells me this could be the dragon, guys. Is it could it could be the dragon? I I I don't know. Could be a lot of people. We have 16 players, but anyway, let's talk about what that does to Rolf the Ganger, because Rolf, this guy, he can't push his deer now, which is normally important. He can't push those deer in for a fast feudal time. He he might not even know where some of his resources are. Okay, so fortunately for him, he does know this pig is here. But that's just not good, man. That That's just... Whoa! Whoa! That's not good, but she's coming back for revenge! Oh! Oh! Da-da. Da-da. Da-da, da-da, da-da. No! Come on, villager! It was so close. Now Blood of the Hun knows what's going on, though. That's not good. That is not good for you, Hrolf. I, I don't know why he sent the villager. It would have been sick if he sniped the scout. And he's building a barracks? Yeah, this Rolf the Ganger guy, he doesn't like water maps. Or at least he's prepared a special strategy for us here. Building a forward barracks. And Blood of the Hun does not see that, actually. He's probably on edge. He doesn't want to lose his scout by accident. He is walling up now, though. So this is not your typical start to rooster. Just want to zoom out here and show you guys what rooster looks like. So you could obviously cross over here as Rolf has done twice, but it's easy to wall that up. And uh, then there's water in the center. In the event it was a full water game and they just played with Navy, uh, you can always redock in the back or find some fish in the back. If I double click the fish here with Capture Age, uh... Yeah, you can see... Oh, hold on. I got to get back to the action. I'm sorry. The militia are coming in. I can show you the features later on. Uh, this Rolf the Ganger guy, he's already my favorite. <laughs> he's now housing the opponent's berries. He didn't even have loom, man. He didn't even have loom. He's getting loom now. As is Bleda. Uh, and he's drushing. So, this Vil, I mean, she is... She is a very confident woman. Where are you going? We have a gate from Bleda, so now these units are trapped. Oh, kill the scout! Kill the scout! Ooh! Got him. Is this worth it? Is this worth it? I don't know. It's at least forcing idle time for Red. Oh! Oh, there's a hole here? Okay, another one gets in. <laughs> But, I mean, it hasn't done anything except for some idle time. And I think that Blood of the Hun with a fire galley can probably take control of the water, which is so important for the fish. This is not at all what I expected. Especially from a player who played so good in game one. Hmm. Well, plenty of people are guessing here in the Twitch chat, and I'm sure on YouTube as well. And I guess... It's important for Bleda that he doesn't let this villager li live. Um. Oh wow, he's trying to... <laughs> She's trying to wall herself in here. Let's see. 
Viper's really good at doing this, so Viper confirmed if, if this Vil can get walled in. What you do is you wait until after they hit you. Alright, confirmed, not Viper. You wait until after they hit you and then there's a little bit of separation and then you can build some palisade walls. Uh, I, I have no clue what we're talking- what, what we're even looking at right now. But this militia's still in here. Uh, this militia's still out here. And I imagine fire galleys will be on the way. Yeah, fire galleys on the way for red. Actually, oh, this is this is interesting. So I, I didn't realize this before because we don't see a lot of this. But if the if you have a fishing ship on the way, it'll show that, and then it shows the fire galley there without that little progress bar. But honestly, this fire galley should kill Blue's fish. Blue has to make a decision now. Like, does he go? Oh, oh my God! Oh my god, this is a perfect time to use that follow hotkey. Here he goes, guys. Here he goes. He's looping all the way around. I love it. I love it. Welcome to Hidden Cup 2. We got a transport on a water map. And here comes the fire galley, so I guess he's accepted that he's going to lose his fish. Oh, if he towers the gold, that would be sick. That would be so sick. Now, Red has made a spearman, though. Red could scout it with his pointy boy. <gasps> oh! I think it's intentional that he spread his fish up so he could maybe get some scouting intel. <gasps> no way! I bet you he patrolled the spearman to the north of the map. Yeah, he patrolled it. <gasps> oh! See? He found it! He found the archery range! And you know what? He's already making an archery range, so he's already ahead with the archer production. That's a big deal to scout that, though. Yeah, now he realizes he needs to stonewall this up. That's a huge, huge deal. And, well, hold on a second. The transport's looped around. What are your walls gonna do when there's a transport back here? Huh. So we have an outpost and stone walls. Okay, the villagers are going to get walled out as they are towering. <laughs> I can't. This is too good. What is this game, man? This is so weird. That's what it is. This is so weird. Well, Red for sure should have a lead when it comes to the eco because he has the fish. Wait a second. Where did Blue come from with his fire galley? He's killing a Japanese fishing ship. This should not happen. And then we have a transport from Blood of the Hun. Blood of the Hun is going for his own transport right back at Blue. Blue won't have any defense at home. He can't build a tower because he's built one forward. And uh, then he won't be able to defend with skirmishers or archers because he has his range forward. So here comes the transport. And this is brilliant from Red. He's defended nicely. Uh, he is getting towered again. And this tower this tower is actually going to be really complicated to deal with. But I don't think Blue can defend from the archers. Blue would have to choose one tower. Maybe if you tower here, it secures your stone and your gold and your wood. He does not know yet. This militia is still at it, guys. I think the guy just broke in. Quick, upgrade to man-at-arms is totally worth it for one guy. I think he's gonna get a vill kill. Red has too much to focus on. Red kills a vill over here. He should probably kill a second. And he's attacking her right now. Uh, oh! Red kills the transport that Blue was trying to use. And yeah, the vill did go down there. That's hilarious. Has Blue even reacted to this yet? I think he's just now realized what's going on here. And he needs a house wall and he needs a tower. Uh, right here, I think. What a hectic game, man. What a hectic game. So Blue, he didn't want to go for the standard meta against Japanese, or maybe against his opponent, Bleda. Might have been something that he felt in game one. Maybe he felt like he was a strong player. Maybe he's just wants to play with his strengths, which is not water play. Yeah, so fortunately for Rolf, he does have the towers on the way up at home. But if you compare the vill count, it's a seven villager lead now for Red. And also, Red has the fishing ships, so Red should have a commanding lead in this game. And it's just one of many reasons why you normally don't avoid the water like this. Uh, 
because getting that eco is so important. And what I wanted to show you earlier is I wanted to double click the fish and show you how many, how much food is here. Just on this part of our screen, there's 3,000 food for 15 deep fish. So, yeah, it's it's hugely important. Well, this is great, man. This is a great sign for me. Uh, you know, myself and my editors put in a lot of time to make sure things are squared away and that we're going to have some cool things to display for you guys. But the one thing we can't control are the games. So to see the first best of five be this good is really, really exciting. Um, last night I couldn't sleep and I, I can never sleep before a big event. I'm just so stressed out about, like, you know, I want things to go well. I want the production value to be good. This time we mixed in capture range, which has been awesome. Uh, and there's always a risk that something might go wrong. So uh, just a million different things go through my mind. And this is this is easing some concerns for, for sure. Uh, and I, I love what Red has done here. He's lost his transport, but he sends the archers underneath the tower now. And Blue is now making some defensive skirmishers. And oh, Blue! <laughs> He actually ran out here. He had no shit moment like, oh no, I can't stay here. And uh, you could hear that Red tried to gate him in. That's funny. Red and his gates, man. So I, I continue to look at the resources for the players. And unfortunately for Rolf, he seems at the limit. He doesn't have a lot of anything except maybe gold. And so I would expect Bleda to have a much faster castle time. And normally on Rooster... The faster castle times, if it's going to be this much faster, could decide the game. I like how Blue has continued to try and snipe the fish. However, he's up against Japanese fishing ships. And funny enough, right when I say snipe, Snipey Jones has subscribed to the stream. Thank you, Snipey Jones. Um, you could pick the one or two fishing ships off, but you're never going to kill all of them. Though in this case, I guess quite a few fishing ships have been killed, and I think that that's just Red being distracted. Oh, Red has made a demo! Tattoo confirmed? Tattoo confirmed? Uh, that's a demo raft in there, guys. And if the villagers go near the shoreline, get your T90 demos ready. This is going to be exciting stuff. Oh, boy. Yeah, the health bar moves around with the birds. It's, it's not a bug, it's a feature, guys. All right. Oh. Oh, he could try it now. I think he could connect with her. Oh, let's go. Boom. Three villagers down with the demo raft. What a sick play from Blood of the Hun. That was amazing. And he's also sending villagers this way to land and maybe go for siege and monks or something with his faster castle time. Tato confirmed. Tato confirmed. Uh, over here, Tato, I mean Blood of the Hun, lost a few archers. <laughs> now, I say that like it's not a general good idea to go for demos. I mean, obviously most pro players are going to think of doing that. How on earth is Blue doing this? He just lost three vills forward, and he figures out, let's send five more forward. And honestly, if these towers stay up, and he starts getting towers up on this side, it can make life very complicated for Blood as the game goes on. He only has one wood line right now. And are, are, is Red going to dock here? Or what's going on? I kind of feel like he might... He might dock and transport around. Yeah, he's going to dock and consider transporting his knights around. And meanwhile, you know, he needs to protect his fish, so he's getting war galleys, so his ships will upgrade from a demo rafts to demo ships. And from fire galleys to fire ships. <clears throat> but Rolf is on the way up, guys. And he is going to stonewall. Does he see this? He does not see the dock. That's a really good idea from Red to expect the walls and think about transporting around. I think what Rolf will probably do is he finishes another tower here. I think what he'll probably do is he'll put a lot of focus on land. I mean, if you didn't gather that already, then I must have been doing a bad job of casting, but just want to repeat that. Uh, he'll probably try and pressure here. Making a lot of pikes right now from this forward barracks because he might expect some knights. But again, he doesn't... This is the problem with forward buildings. He doesn't have any defense at home now. And such an intelligent transport from Bleda 
to send the knights around and the villagers. And these are two very good players. You can tell Blue is thinking about that because he came over here to expect the transport. And now he quick walls. So he quick walls the knights out. Really strong stuff. I'm, I'm surprised that Rolf is still in the game in all honesty. I mean, I would say the guy is definitely behind. Like he's he's 10 vils behind. He's he's fish behind. He's more villagers behind. There's a lot of factors where it's not looking good for him, but at least he's surviving, man. This is a sign for the future. All right, and that tower goes up. So d defensive tower for blue, but what he needs now is to pressure red in some way. Okay, this now guard tower is coming in. I mean, all pros know that guard tower exists, but Tato gets it an awful lot. This, if anyone's Tato, I, I'm I'm so confident of this pick, and we've only seen one set of games. <laughs> but but this this feels like it could be Tato, man. And now the towers are, are being spaced out. And this tower specifically will be great. It denies wood and it denies the stone. And what do you do in blue shoes? He doesn't have the economy to pressure Red's land. Uh, he could think about going back onto water, possibly. And I think he's doing that. Yeah, so maybe if you stabilize at your base and win water and then hold that, it could be good. So you shift focus away from the land. But it should be quite easy for the red player, for Blood of the Hun, to defend from that, uh, because he'll easily notice it, and he already has the upgrades in on water himself, plus he has the Japanese fish. Wheelbarrow and Crossbowman now on the way for Blood of the Hun. He's just looking to get something to stop these towers from continuing. And he's building defensive towers of his own. So again, I don't think Blue will be able to push in much further. So for Rolf the Ganger, I think it's win water now or die soon. Ooh, oh, I hope he's converting the higher HP knight. Oh, he did. Nice play. Nice play. If you went for the low HP one, that would have been unfortunate. And Red is actually going to use his fire ship to protect from that other knight. And he's looping a villager around, which is being tracked. A uh, red is, sorry. Keep an eye on those resources for Blood of the Hun, guys. He's going to click Imp, or could click Imp in the future. I really just think he needs to defend on water now, and he wins the game. There's nothing that blue has that is pressuring. There's a few towers here. Uh, those could be taken down with the Siege Workshop. A battering ram's already on the way. And then this tower here is not going to do much. And I guess a monastery for blue for some possible conversions. But, you know, blue needs to make the water count. And that's what he's going for now. And you know what? He has some decent numbers here. This is something Bleda needs to defend from. A nice little demo from Bleda. Uh, he needs demos and fires, though. Fascinating stuff. This game... I mean, messy eco for Rolf here, but this game has been really, really good. Yeah, so there's nothing that Blue has that can stop this battering... Well, he has a villager, I guess. So that's the only thing he has that can stop the battering ram from killing the towers. Blood of the Hun has 68 vills versus 52. He does not have any fish anymore. Blue could start fish booming behind this control if he wants to. I still think he needs to make sure he locks that down. Because it's not... With demos, is never secure. The game has definitely slowed down for both of them. As they're trying to stabilize. Red stabilizing more to the north. And uh, Blue's actually... Blue's actually thinking of making some Maganels here, I think, but now Red's building a castle. Big deal. So both of his sides are locked down for the most part. This is where you should think about going Imp and- Oh! Oh, he's, he's thinking about towering here. Um, that tower's not gonna go up. She's been converted. She has been converted. Did you- I think Bleda just- <laughs> I think- I think Bleda the Hun tried to delete the vill before it was converted. 
and he deleted his house instead. <laughs> That's definitely what happened. There's no other explanation. He's like, oh, I gotta be quick so he doesn't take her. And then he deleted the house. Well, I mean, there's not gonna be anywhere to live there anyway, so whatever. It's, it's not, not necessary. She was already going to the other side. She, she, she's gonna live in the blue houses now. I love how stubborn Red was with the counterattack. This, this night was the night from earlier. And it was on 5 HP. And now it gets converted, but... Just... The guard tower counterattack was a really good move. And I'm still wondering now, what's the next play for Red? He has 20 more population. He can see Blue is trying to stabilize a bit. What's he do? He has food and he has gold. Blue has tons of gold. He could abuse the market, man. He could go next game gold nothing style. It's gotta be Imp for both of them. Uh, for the Malian player, going heavy on water and Imp with Galleons is tough. You'd want to go for Fires because Malians like Bracer. For the Japanese player, they can do e either land or Imp better than Malians, in my opinion. In my opinion. Um, yeah, I mean, Japanese infantry will kill Malian infantry. I guess Malians could go for a bit of, for some gunpowder, but Japanese have the counters to that as well. Yep, Blood of the Hun has 600 food now. Guys, keep looking at the bottom left. I know the location of this is a bit different. Whoa! The market abuse from Rolf! Rolf is on the way to Imp! I think he had 100 food and 1900 gold. Making use of the free gold mining upgrade for Malians. Holy cow, he's on his way to Imp first? That is some market abuse right there. Dave confirmed, man. Dave confirmed. And now Bled is up right behind him. This series is sick, man. This series is sick. The fact that this is the first set of games, I mean, there's always a potential it could be a sweep in any tournament, right? And so you don't know who the players are. It's neck and neck. I'm loving this right now. So Red has that eco lead, but he won't have the faster Imperial Age time. I just don't know what Rolf is going to do with his faster imp time. Red has more population on water now, so this transport's not going to work. These villagers need to run. Um, and it is fires, I guess, for Blue. Maybe he'll go for fast fire ship. He has a little bit of a head start, which could be good for him. Oh god, this is bad. He lost his monks. And he will save the bills, I guess. Yeah, it's got to be full water control now for both of them, I think. And I love Red is, is still using this dock to produce and snipe monks. And he just wants to keep the tower up. How annoying has he been with his navy here? Okay. So, Blood of the Hun will realize he was not the fastest to the Imperial Age. He should realize that his opponent will, will go for fast fires because he's Malians. Two dock production in the center versus four dock production and... Oh no, I'm sorry, that's not a dock, that's a house. Three dock production and remember, uh, the Japanese player has more resources. So this, this has got to be coming in now. Wait, do Malians not get fast fire? Does anyone know? I feel like they might not get fast fire. I know they don't get Bracer. You don't see Malians on water enough. The GG is called. You don't see Malians on water enough. Maybe he realized. Maybe he's like, oh, shoot, I don't get fast fire and just called the GG because he, he saw the score and realized he was behind an eco. <laughs> uh, can we get a confirmation? Do Malians get fast fire? No fast fire? Oh, well, then it's, yeah, then it's over for sure. <laughs> he doesn't have the eco uh, and he's up against Japanese Navy. Yeah, that's it's it's game over. And the score is now 1-1. One one. Um, I don't really understand the Malians pick, though. Like, most pros should know that Malians are not a great water sieve. They lack Bracer for their Galleons, and they don't get fast fire. That's a weird one for me. If you look over, or look back to the Civilizations, he could have gone Mongols. Mongols is a strong pick. 
I don't know. I, I just find it a bit surprising. Uh, Mongols is also a strong pick on Cup and Arabia Regicide, which we might see for Hrolf. We'll get to go to one of his home maps now. Uh, but before we do that, guys, let's go over to the achievements. And here we are. So this should show the eco difference. The KD was not a lot in that, but Blood of the Hun had way more food, way more wood, more stone, and more gold. That said, though, that game was the most entertaining game of the series so far. That was some sweet stuff. So if you're curious as to who the players are, this will be revealed on the final day when we reveal the finalists. Again, this tournament has a prize pool of over $10,000, 16 best players in the world. After each set, I will allow you guys to do a poll if you're here on Twitch. And let's let's go back. What a start, man. What a start. So I'm going to answer a few questions in Twitch chat before we get into the next one. I'm not going to neglect you guys. I thank you for being here. How many people are new today? I see some new faces. I see some old faces as well. What's up, T90 Watcher? Ducks of Savior says, are you wearing underwear for this? Yes, I'm wearing my, my Mario undies. Hello, guys. Chat's moving so fast, I can't keep up with you all. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you very much for being here and supporting me, supporting Hidden Cup 2. Uh, if, you're, if you're looking to support the stream and get involved, the best way to do so is with the sub. Thank you very much for the new Prime subs today, guys. Hell... Uh, Hell Diverian, Nuss, Mare, thank you guys. I'm going to totally butcher your names. So as long as you're okay with that, then we're good. A strong cup of tea donated five bucks. He said, love your cast, dude. Thank you. Uh, Futhark donated five bucks. He said, the spec overlay is so good. I agree, man. Capture Age is sweet. Uh, thank you to ben flip for gifting subs thank you big boy snipe betax zpar fail prento ronsar obadiah you guys are the best t90 how do they how does the picking phase work can you explain they pick one by one they pick the same saver map so this was done prior to the series they both picked two home maps and then they did a sieve draft so the maps were picked before the sieves which kind of makes malians look dumb do you guys agree Because if you know the potential maps, then why, right? Like, why? I mean, you could choose Malians on Cup. Uh, maybe he had a brain fart. I don't know. Maybe he meant to pick Mongols and misclicked. T90 official, will the capture age go for the players as well? No, no. Capture age is, uh, I think I'm the only one that besides Dave that has access to it right now. Okay. Will 14, we'll start game number three. We don't know if it's Arabia Regicide or Cup. They don't have to do it in order. So uh, we'll find out here in a moment. Rolf the Ganger needs a response to hopefully go up two to one. Uh, so far, I think Rolf does not seem to be a player who can play all the maps. Uh, which, uh, I mean, he played great on, on the... Uh, he played great on the Arabia, and then he also chose Arabia again for a home map. So something tells me, I mean, I spoke to a few players about the Fat Dragon, and they said that Vivi's weakness is that the guy doesn't play all the maps really well. He tends to play mainly the, uh, like, Arabia very well. So maybe, maybe it is the Dragon in game one. I don't really know. We're just speculating. And we're in the game. Perfect. So guys, remember in game one... When I was saying how Blood of the Hun should have not allowed his opponent to get Mayans, and he should have chose Aztecs, well now he has Aztecs. So Blood of the Hun has Aztecs for Arabia Regicide. Where's the king? Here it is. Check it out. Here's the king for Rolf. Running around, getting that scouting intel. Hopefully he'll scout the eagle that's around, because the eagle might try and lame him. And, oh, actually, the sheep are being stolen. Is the king going to spot it? Uh, the king is going to want his food. Okay, Rolf, you saw that. You, you saw the sheep. This is the second time you've seen sheep. Get it, king. You have to bear with, bear with the kings. They're a bit lazy. 
That's why they gained all that weight. So laming is always huge on Arabia. But with Arabia Regicide, you start with a king. So you can scout with the king at home. That's what Red could do. And then you could lame with the eagle. So it's a huge laming map. And Hrolf is just going to let this happen? See? I just don't get it. <laughs> why, is he, why is he letting this happen? The king is faster than the eagle. He's not going to bite. He's not going to hurt you. Interesting stuff. Uh, meanwhile, I want to look at Blood as Base. Blood as Base isn't the best when it comes to wood. It's, uh, there's no wood on the back for him. It feels like it'll just fall off the edge of the map here. So as the laming comes in, I guess Blue is chasing down his sheep. Oh, is he going to find him? Oh, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Rolf, get the sheep. That's hilarious. <laughs> He's going to get him back. <laughs> um, I mean, at least for now, until Red tries to steal him again. My God. But but anyway, as they're trying to lame each other, uh, here's the golds for Blood of the Hunt. Main gold, second gold, and third gold. He does have a nice stone location, nice berry location. The wood he hasn't actually gone out to yet. Wood is pretty disastrous for him. And Red's going to get the sheep back. My goodness. Hilarious. Oh my god! He's going for an early drush, guys. He's going for an early drush. There's been so much that I haven't been able to talk about at all. But on Arabia Regicide, you start with a barracks. And so it gives players added flexibility to maybe go for different strategies. We've already seen the hilarious start with the lames. So, Blood of the Hun. Going with a few militia. Very fascinating stuff. Lots of lames, lots of militia. Now, blue is not going to have loom for this. Now, blue is probably thinking about going scouts as Mongols, but... Uh... Wow, what a start. What a start. Sorry, it's a mouthful. Oh, God, no. No, Rolf! No, don't... Oh, my heart. Give me a second. Oh. Jeez, dude, I didn't come prepared today. He almost sent his king directly into the TC fire. Oh, I mean, then it would have been Bact confirmed. Bact is, is known for losing his kings. Okay, it's all right. We could settle down a little bit. Hrolf is on the way up to the next stage, and he is, is going for scouts for sure. That's what Mongols are known for. He has one lumber camp walled in with two villagers. And the rest of his wood income is going to come in on stragglers. That just gives you an idea of how hectic this game has been. Monday. By a show of ones in the Twitch chat, how many of you guys saw the YouTube video I uploaded? I, it was MBL vs. Twig, and I was using Capture Age. It was a uh, Koreans vs. Saracens War. Did you guys see that YouTube video? Okay. In that YouTube video, MBL forgot his king was in the TC, and... He ungarrisoned it forward. It is extremely common because when you want to send villagers forward, that's in the TC, you'll send the king along with it if you're not paying attention. So, we've already seen a mistake from Hrolf. We have to we have to be very mindful of where these kings are throughout this game. So the drush was an interesting idea for Bleda, but now Blue's going to start massing those scouts. See, look, right there, you see how the king popped out? That stuff's going to happen all game. So he needs a follow-up. And Blood of the Hun also doesn't have the best map, right? Um, so the problem with the Drush is it made his feudal age later. And that, that could be his weakness now, because Hrolf, as long as he avoids all of these militia, he, he might be able to use that speed and pick off villagers at Red's base. So if you have a slower civilization... But it's a sieve that's strong, and Aztecs are one of those sieves. The best thing to do is to force your opponent to fight you. And so that's exactly what Red's going to do. If Red were to tower here, for example, this would probably be the best tower. Blue is forced to stay here. So that means that Blue won't be able to go over to Red's exposed base. So this is the way to play this situation. In fact, Blue is sending out his own villagers. The man-at-arms upgrade isn't in yet for Blood of the Hun because he's just now hit Feudal Age, and I'll switch the HP bars over to Blue and Red to compare this. It seems better for Blood of the Hun. That's a really useful feature, guys. It's a very useful feature. Uh, the fact that I can show you the HP bars as I'm casting it, you can see the collective HP. This is still super risky for both of them. 
could go either way. But there's three men at arms in here on full HP, and I imagine Blue's gonna send a spear, and the micro continues. So I, I like how Blue has sent a few villagers, because now that he has five villagers and two scouts, he's able to push Red back, and that's... That's what Mongols need. They need to keep Aztecs from snowballing units on them. We'll zoom in on the fight. <laughs> See what the micro is like. Uh, Blood of the Hun kills all the scouts, but now he just has villagers. Get out of here, guys. Let's see how close. Oh, jeez. You got some weird pimples going on, guys. You gotta get some face cream. Jeez. Uh, archery range is now for Hrolf. And a tower on his gold, because he realizes that's bad. Honestly, say what you want about red's base. We didn't talk about blue's base, but, um... This is, this is not great either. So it's fair for both of them, <laughs> just in negative ways. I just feel as though if blue ends up getting ranged units, it's going to be very complicated for red, uh, due to the fact that the wood can be ranged. See? I'm not body shaming, that's called an observation. Okay? It's just an observation. <laughs> Someone's gonna be entirely rude to their their friend. Be like, hey fatty! Be like, hey, that's not that's not nice. You're body shaming. And be like, Frank, it's just an observation, okay? It's just an observation. Did Blue just send his king into this tower? He did. I mean, okay, so I talked about it in that YouTube video. It's not a bad idea to put your king inside a tower because you don't accidentally ungarrison that tower. But this tower is forward, right next to everything that's going to go down here. <laughs> so, I'm not sure how I feel about that one. Maybe the king will be able to direct the troops easier from the front. That's probably it. So, since you start with the barracks, it's easy for the Mezosiv to start creating those eagles. And already you see the eagles and spearmen coming out, uh, which could work out pretty well, I think, but you need to get more numbers if you're Bleda. At the moment, just three eagles and one spear might not be enough. For red, you need to mass these archers and mass the scouts and hit red before he's able to get to the crucial numbers of eagle warriors. Uh, and now we have a defensive tower from red. I have to say, it was a good decision to come home like this. Um... I don't love how he used the Drush, I don't think it did anything, but it was a wacky idea, and it's a pretty even game right now. Red is housed, though. He was housed heavily. The barracks actually says at the population limit. So, MBL confirmed. Man, the thing is, MBL has so many quirks, he will say MBL confirmed every single game. Someone gets housed, MBL confirmed. Lamed, MBL confirmed. Forging now on the way, and, and scale male armor is already in on the eagles. This is where they start to get strong. And that's probably what the Aztec player will stick with, just masked eagles. Uh, Mongols, their strength is slowly disappearing in this game. Mongols have that faster feudal age, which is great, but it's not so great if... You get to this point versus Aztecs. Like now, what do you do? You lose all your scouts, and there's there's three eagles that are on full HP against you with all these upgrades. There's not a lot you can do. You you lose your archers. You lose your skirmishers. You have to create more scouts. Blood of the Hun has two barracks creating these eagles. So make sure you keep an eye on the right hand side here. You'll see that Rolf is producing archers out of two ranges nonstop. Red's been having production problems. So he. He took a good fight there, but then I think he should have ran back and waited for more numbers, and he hasn't been creating numbers as much as he should have been. That could be a concern. For Hrolf, he is able to wall his base up a bit, and he's going to stone, possibly for a castle later on, or more defensive towers. Oh, that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, the chain mail icon is here for the scale mail icon. I think capture age people are watching currently, so yeah, that is uh, that is incorrect. Remember, this is an alpha, <clears throat> so we'll figure these things out. T 
T90 Fish, did you ask Fire to co-cast with you? Uh, I didn't want to bring him in because I figured he'd smoke me. He's way better than me at casting. Castle Age on the way for Blood of the Hun. Still needs to mask the Eagles, though. He only has four, and this is not the time to be losing them. I like how he went to stone for defensive towers. That's a good move. Uh, he's a bit exposed on... Oh, yep, on this part of the wood line. So that will need to be addressed. He's taking both of the golds. This tells me he's going all in the next stage. I don't think he'll be adding too many town centers. But if he, if he gets a town center up on this side of the wood line, it would secure it. And then Rolf is about to click up to Castle Age. Uh, what just happened there? Yeah, okay. His resources must have changed because of the market or something. He picks off a villager there. That's well done. And I like how active Rolf has been with this new scout. He now sees... Okay, why is Blood not run away from this? He now sees that Blood is building this tower. And Blood loses two more villagers. See, that was avoidable, though. That was avoidable. He saw it when he lost the villager. here. Why didn't he finish the tower earlier? Kind of confusing. Again, really not the time you want to take the fights. Uh, the Eagles will still do decently well here, but ideally you'd upgrade these. Yeah, he's fine. He'll kill the archers. Rolf is probably not too concerned because Rolf will be going with knights in the next stage, I assume. But nice job there from Blood of the Hun. Blood of the Hun. Weakens a few villagers at the very least. Delayed some stuff. And he's getting his Eagle Warrior upgrade. So now I'm curious to see what shows up after Chainmail Armor comes in. On this uh, user interface here. Hmm. I mean, both players are open in different ways, right? Both players are open. And these eagles are just going to loop around. This is dangerous for Hrolf. This is super dangerous. He has one stable? Just one stable? He's going to need a lot more knights than that. And don't tell me there's a hole there. Oh, there is a hole there! And the king! What are you doing, man? <laughs> the king! At least wait a moment there. My god! Hrolf is not good with his kings. This is supposed to be hit. This is his home map pick as well. Oh my goodness. I mean, just fail in so many different ways for him, man. He He's trying to go crossbowman with Bodkin. I mean, it's okay if you have a knight buffer, but it's not great. Uh, then he didn't wall off his gold. He had so much time to wall to the cliff here, didn't he? He walled here. Why not wall here? He could have walled his base with all the time he had. That's probably the best move. Just leave your king underneath the TC and not garrison it. Only dangerous if your opponent has range units and red does not. And red's coming forward with a siege workshop. So yet again, you see the strength of Mesosivs though, don't you? I said it in game one with Mayans. Uh, and here we are with Aztecs. This is why I think they should be globally banned. And In every set, players can choose one global ban. And I think if one person globally bans Mayans, then the other person can globally ban Aztecs. The Sibs are just, I don't want to say free wins, but they're super duper strong. And Blue, hoping to start the Mass of Mangadai earlier than normal. He is building a castle here. But he is he is falling behind with economy. He's losing villagers everywhere you look. But fortunately for him, he's been able to wall up. I mean, if he didn't get the walls up, this game was over. Oh! I, I like the micro from Blue to save his villagers inside the tower, just as long as it's not the king. And then crossbows have done an okay job. See, Mangadai will have more mobility. So with mass Mangadai, will actually be okay versus Eagles. I think the concern is that Red is probably adding TCs at home. Uh, though I could be wrong on that. Nope, just one TC. I guess he did come for a forward siege workshop, right? So it's not easy for him to to get any town centers out. Red now sees his opponents building a castle. He saw it before as well. And blue, does he see the Maganel? He does, so he needs to run away from the stone. And he'll need to run away from the wood or tower it. Yeah, he'll tower it, okay. A few Magadai can help snipe the mango, but right now this is still a risk. Okay, so the crossbows have actually worked better than you would expect here. 
the vill count is pretty even. It's 49 to 46. And the powerhouse unit of Mongols is the Mangadai. We had a doubt split there, doubt confirmed. So if you start making the Mangadai in Castle Age, there's always a huge debate over this. If you start making the Mangadai in Castle Age, it puts you behind an economy and you lose a lot of map control. But if you get there, then it's a wonderful thing because you can start that mass now instead of trying to wait till the Imperial Age. Okay, there's a second TC for red. Uh, let's talk about TC placements. I like a TC here for him and a TC here. That or maybe a TC here, but just to secure the wood because that's his biggest concern. And then for blue, you look at his point of view, I think a TC here is great, and then probably a TC right here, honestly. He doesn't actually see this stone in the back, and he does see the Maganels moving in on top of the hill, and he loses a villager to this. He saw it, so I think he should be able to snipe it, but he sent his Mangadai forward, and he's hitting red before red can secure his base. Really fascinating stuff. Red... I mean, I don't agree with the Siege Workshop choice, right? The Siege Workshop, sure, it's, it's killed a villager or two, but if you went for a town center instead, that wood line's protected and he doesn't lose as much. I mean, it comes down to some small things in competitive AoE too, and Blue's Mangadai are doing work. 53 vills for both players now. Oh, oh, look at the sneaky scout coming in. Oh, and the Maganel was shot one villager down again. And another vill. I do feel like this is going to be short-lived. There's villagers going down in both economies. This is an incredible game. Watch your king, guys. Watch your king. <laughs> do not send your king out red. Do not send your king out blue. What a series this has been. In the round of 16. Remember, it's random seeding, so we could have Viper vs. Leary. Who knows? I talked to a lot of the players about how they might prepare for this, and they said it's tough because you don't know who you'll face. A red gets a conversion, kills a Mangadai, that's that's pretty good actually. And he's building a tower over here. I'm surprised that Blue would not go that direction to try and snipe the Maganel, because the Eagles are no problem, it's just really the Maganel he needs to stop. Oh! But... Blue comes out to snipe the Ville. He can't do it. Also, we did have the no lame comment from, uh, was it Bleda last game? In all comments? Uh, in all comments. In all caps? Well, anywho, uh, Blue has to abandon his wood line. And he is saving up for a second castle. Uh, could just build the castle here, honestly. I think it's the best move. It secures the stone, secures the gold. Why is Red not going after these vills? These vills are so exposed. I feel like he could go right in here. And why did Blue leave it open? That was an avoidable situation for you, Rolf. What's going on here, man? So many crossbows going down, villagers going down. He'll eventually clean it up, but I have been saying that for a while, so I'm not so sure now. Blood of the Hun takes the lead. Slightly. A lot of those eagles did die, though, <laughs> to the Maganel, which is kind of funny. This is risky business for you, Roth. This is scary. There's monks around with nine range. There's a lot of eagles as well. Up, he loses the Mangadai. And now he will run into TC fire as he tries to run away. And, oh god! Oh, is this our first doubt sighting? A forward castle. Will it go up? Oh boy. Okay, well... Red's on the way to the Imperial Age, which is only possible with Aztecs. It, it's incredible what Aztecs can do with their economy. This is Red's point of view. He does not see the castle. Fascinating stuff. So for Red, he's just trying to hold out until Elite Eagle. For Blue, he probably realizes that. Realizes that Red has left himself exposed because of it. And he's looking to pressure in Castle Age. Now, I don't see the Imperial Age being all that soon for Blue. For, uh, Blue. I could be wrong on that. It's very complicated to, to get the food and the gold required to go imp when you're building so many castles and making so many Mangatai. So it'll be cool because Red's going to take some losses here. And he's losing out on his wood, which he really needs. Like here, that wood is his only accessible wood beyond, I guess, this little nugget. Um, but while Red's having going to have some eco problems, he has a lot of eagle problems. 
And I think the play here is probably to raid as much as possible. Don't even worry about the castle. Just send your eagles directly into Red's economy. I, send, sorry, send your eagles directly into Rolf's economy. Rolf is blue. I like the fact that uh, since he's Aztecs, he's working on bringing in some relics. Don't tell me. Rolf saw the monk. Rolf saw the monk, and Rolf is going to kill that monk. I know monk. Incredible map awareness. Incredible... Awareness from both players in this game. At red, before he hits him, will build a castle. So he could actually tread this down. This is good stuff. Uh, a few Maganels, or Rams rather, inside the siege workshop. Elite Eagle's on the way now. And Rolf has to know the danger of the Elite Eagles. Rolf has a 20 villager lead, and he has a lot of Mangadai. But Castle Age Mangadai. They're decent against Elite Eagles, but they are not great. Okay, see, Red took this fight before he had Elite Eagle. And he's still doing okay. Wait for Elite Eagle once it's 8 Pierce Armor. Yeah, best of luck. So it's tough to know what you do in Blue's situation besides just making more Magadai and trying to micro them. Uh, you don't really have the food eco and the resources remaining to go for a lot of Knights. See, you can't go Knights and Mangadai. It's just got to be Mass Mangadai. I like how Blue sniped that Vill there, but, um, you know, still problems remain for him. And for Red, you got to think eventually he's going to get these relics. And eventually he can always tech switch into the skirmishers that Aztecs have. And he's going to trip down this castle. So I would say Blood of the Hunt currently has the lead with how this game's going to play out. Blood of the Hun needs to split up his eagles. I love this. Killing villagers here? Great. Split up. Send more eagles elsewhere. Now what does he see here? He does see the stone is there. He has to know that his opponent would want stone. Is he going directly to the stone? Uh, he is! So he could kill those villagers. Now Hrolf is trying to keep his castle up. Hrolf needs his castles to produce the Mangadai, which are already not doing all that well. And so he could possibly try and snipe that trebuchet. Hold on, did you just hear the bell? Red just rang the town bell. Okay, what pro player still has the town bell hotkey in 2019? Red just rang the town bell. What's going on? Why did he do that? All of his eco is inside of his town centers. Red, yo, unring the bell, dude. Okay, I, most pro players unbind that hotkey. That, I've never seen that before. Okay, he's, he's, like, I've seen players ring it and then unring it immediately, but I've never seen it be rung for that long. He sorted it out. It's fine. <laughs> it, it's fine. Uh, Rolf still has a population lead, guys, but it's not a huge population lead. And eagles are just swarming. He's lost the villagers here. He'll lose villagers here. There's no way he'll have the eco for imp at this rate. How are you going to have the... The, uh, the gold eco for Imp if your gold keeps getting raided. He has the food eco. He could maybe use the market, but he can't take this gold. And he's almost out of gold here. I love how Blood of the Hunt is playing this. And Hrolf will have to give it up. This castle's going down. So it is two relics for red. You can see there's 14,000 gold remaining on the map. If you look down below the mini-map to the right side. Yep, this gold being raided now. And now, as Rolf is on the way to the next stage, uh, he's going towards Elite Mangatai. I think that red could think about going for a, a lateral skirms in the near future. Still continue the raid, because you have a two-minute window to do so. But then, think about tech switching. He's looking to take the extra gold here. If you zoom out, you can see where the golds are. There's a gold here he's taken. There's a gold here he's going to take. He sees a lot of the map. He sees almost all of the golds and stones at the moment. And blue is just chasing. As blue chases these eagles, eagles and trebs arrive here. Not a great situation for Rolf. Though I do think he's played well considering the circumstances. Wait! That's the Imp TC! That's the Imperial Age TC! No, Rolf, what are you doing? 
Oh, he just, you know what? Before the TC even went down, he switched it to this TC. Oh, he was halfway there. He already doesn't have the time. That's so bad. Oh, man. Well, hopefully this guy doesn't lose his king now. The king is inside the castle there. The trebuchets are going after that castle. Not looking good for... Rolf, not looking good at all. The only saving grace is that Elite Mangadai are insane if he gets to it. But he, he does not seem to have the gold and the stone to continue creating these as the game goes on. And if he was a, an imp now, I'd say it'd be tough for him. But he's just now getting back to the point he was before with that research. And oh god, the king! Don't go inside the tower. No, dude! You're losing the castle and you decide to go inside the tower? Well, it doesn't matter. It's game over anyway. Blood of the Hun gets the win. Blood of the Hun, that's his second win in a row. Blood of the Hun wins the game on the home map for Hrolf. Uh, has to be said, Mesosiv's always going to be dominant. So I kind of expected Aztecs to have the edge here. And what a game from Red. What a game from him because I think he had the worst map. Both players had rough maps. But I think his was worse because of the wood. And he was able to hold on, uh, apply some good pressure. Overall, though, just another solid game in this set. I mean, this is so exciting for me. Hidden Cup 2 is going to be outrageously good if every set is like this. And we're just talking about the first best of five in the round of 16. So I'll back out now. We'll look at the achievements. And uh, again, I think since the games are so close, there's not going to be any huge differences here. But there might be a few. Uh, people were asking me if I had team colors on because they want to know what's going on with the colors. Uh, I do not have team colors on, so they're choosing these colors. These guys have not gone for any funky strategies with the colors. I think we will see players possibly choose yellow because that's what Viper goes for. Uh, we might see orange because of backs, but uh, they've gone for red and blue. Okay, I, I just came out of the game. And people are telling me to update the score. The score is, it's the hidden cup, so the score is hidden. Uh, for every single game, it's going to be one to one. All right? And you'll have to guess what the score was if you missed it. It was like 20 seconds after the game ended. And I'm doing all this stuff. Have some patience. I'm, of course I'm going to update the score. Jeez. All right, so here we go. 102 kills for Bleda. Again, the KDs are close, man. The KDs are close. Uh, Blood of the Hun just had so much more gold. And it makes sense because Hrolf had to collect all that stone before he could mass up a lot of gold. It's just so expensive to make unique units in Castle Age. Uh, Hrolf needed to do more damage before Blood was able to click Imp in this one. Okay. So... Now that Bled of the Hun has won another game, we will move on to the next home map for Hrolf. That's how it works. We don't alternate. We go to the next home map. This prevents games from being sweeps. So if you have one very strong player who would normally 3-0 whoever they're participating against, that very strong player is going to need to play on the home maps of the opponent. Uh, so we'll see two home maps in a row for Hrolf. If Hrolf wins it, ties it up 2-2, two to two, which he needs to, or he's out, then we'll see Cross for the final game. Before we get started, though, thank you again, guys. A Liquid Knight donated 50 bucks. He said, T90, love your stream, so I took off today and tomorrow to be here. Shout out to Capture Age, and let's break some records. I'm, I'm on board with that, man. I'd like to break some records today. Uh, thank you, Liquid Knight, for the 50, man. How many other people called off work? <laughs> Anybody else call off work or or <coughs> get sick? I talked about it on YouTube. I kind of feel bad. <laughs> everyone's everyone's called off work in school. Yes, perfect. I don't feel bad anymore. Uh, Aralon and Cramstar, thank you very much for the new subs as well as Brudos, Prophet Stream, Russian Comrade, and Loblet and Martin AOE. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the love, everybody. Okay. <clears throat> so, now 
Next map will be Cup. Kelts and Huns for Hrolf. Those are the civs he has available. Um, well, I think he'd probably want Huns for Cross, so maybe go Kelts here. And then for Bleda the Hun, he has Slavs and Spanish. We'll see what the choice will be. All right, guys, here we are. We are in the game. Let's do this. Game number four in this best of five. Look how gorgeous it is. This is such a wonderful map. Thank you very much, Hank the Super Nerd. Thank you very, very much for making this awesome, awesome map. This map is called Cup. Uh, I initially wanted a map that looked like a cup. Uh, it it kind of looks like a cup if you zoom out, but <laughs> but don't worry about what it looks like too much. Uh, we'll go into the game here. Hrolf is playing as the Celt in the blue. He needs a response, guys. He is currently down two games to one versus Blood of the Hun. And then we have Slavs for Blood of the Hun. A Blood of the Hun has looked good, but both players have. Wouldn't surprise me to see Hrolf get the win on his home map and move along to game number five. You'll notice there's two bodies of water here. If you were to dock the right-hand side, you cannot get your ships over to the left, and that is the same if you were to dock the left and try and get to the right. Uh, this terrain in the center can be built on, so you could build a barracks there, a house, you could go forward, you can run with villagers or units there. So there's a water focus and land focus. Um, if you look at the gold placements, the gold placements are normally pretty safe. Uh, the wood eco is normally on the back and pretty safe. So there's long potential for Hrolf here, long potential for Hrolf here. Uh, but then you have to push out across the map to get that water control for fish, get that water control so you can control this extra gold. Uh, there's just so many factors on this map, and I don't think there's an exact meta yet. So I'm I'm quite excited to see how this plays out. And, and Kelts is a good sieve for this. Uh, normally, I've seen a lot of players go with archers on this map. Um, archers and water control. So maybe since Celts chop wood faster, we might see Hrolf opt to dock. And uh, it might, that might actually be a dock villager coming out now. You could opt to dock and... Oh! The TC trick! Hold on a second! So I will have some special videos to play during Hidden Cup 2 that can give you guys an idea of what the player's quirks are. But that TC trick there... Where you weaken the boar with the TC and then finish it off with the Vils. There's only a few players who consistently do that. One of them is Mr. Yo. And the other one uh, that I've seen probably more after that is Leary. Um, it might be Tim. Like, honestly, I, I don't see Tim play a lot, but a lot of the Chinese guys do it. You have Tim. I don't see Vivi do it. And Yo. Or it could just be anybody, because every pro should know how to do that. So we really don't have any clue. But guys, write this down. I have a notepad, and I, I've already written down a few things. And I'm not going to tell you, because I want to win that $25 Amazon gift card at the end of the event. Yeah, that's right. And uh, <laughs> everyone would say it was rigged, but I want to see what I could do. Okay, so write down this information at home. What is this dock here for Hrolf? This is... I mean, it's a good dock location, I guess, because of where the fish are, but say hello to Blood of the Hun. These guys are right next to one another. You could actually use scouts if you wanted to attack the fish, or in this case, Blood of the Hun could attack the villager. What are you doing, Daisy? She has no loom, but she will survive, most likely, and make her way back because Rolf is here to protect her. Hmm. Slavs tells me that Blood of the Hunt is thinking about going more land, and he might think about investing into more land economy because of the Slav farming. Uh, Slav, if you had to choose between farming and fishing on this map, it'd probably be farming. Keep in mind, if they both were to go for knights or something, the knights are going to be much better for Slavs in Castle Age because they get the bloodlines. And the scouts are continuing to be a factor here. Guys, I'm not convinced by the strategy from both of them. I, I watched enough of the qualifiers to know that docking this early just makes life difficult for yourself because the scouts can attack your fish. 
And also docking the center is bad. If you dock over here, it's safer. So, so I, these two players are definitely players that did not play in the qualifier. <laughs> it's not Jordan and it's not Dogal. Because I think they would have known better. Though, we haven't seen the map enough to really know what the meta is. That's just my thought on it. Uh, there is the barracks. Actually, a barracks for both of them, right? Yeah, both building the barracks. And we do see villagers going to gold now for Bleda. This is probably for fire galleys. Ooh. Oh, that was bad for Rolf. He had the scout advantage and he just lost it. And Rolf will also go to gold. So I, I think they're trying to do too much here. Maybe they'll both go for man at arms and uh, then water, but this is a lot to handle for your economy. It's not very easy to, to balance all of this right now. Now, Hrolf will hit feudal faster, so he could take the scout fight and get the lead again. He's doing that. And if you compare the scout HP, you can see it's close. Uh, oh, boy. Very close. Bring the militia into the fray. And... <laughs> they both die. <laughs> it's even. The micro is so good. They both lost their scouts. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we have the man-at-arms attack versus the fish. Or the militia, militia attack versus the fish. These are only salmon. There's only 220-some food in each fish, so... It's really not a lot of food, which is why I'm not convinced that putting all the fish in the middle is a good idea. But now we have the first fire galley out for Rolf. And, uh... So I guess he gets to jump on this, right? He'll kill one fishing ship, two fishing ships, and he could kill everything. Which is exciting for me because, personally, I want Rolf to win this so we can see a game number five. Now for Bleda, he has to build farms now for food. That's not the end of the world for Slavs. So I don't think he'll be too frustrated, but... Again, back to the way this is played out, I genuinely believe that this is a player who has not practiced Cup, Blood of the Hun. Remember, this is Hrolf's map. This is his home map. I don't think that Blood of the Hun has played a lot of games on this. Which is what is really exciting about adding a new map in for a tournament, because players can practice and use it for a home map. Because the militia have done nothing. Nothing? Well, except kill that scout. So, and no, don't do this to me, Hrolf. Almost killed an archer as well, right after I said it would do nothing. Make me look bad, man. Okay, so the archer did die. <laughs> okay, it's worth it now to make two militia to kill a scout and an archer. It's worth it. I could kill another archer. Yeah, blood is being annoying with this. Oh, kill the, kill the deer! Dude, kill the deer. Why are you running away? Kill all the deer. You can kill. He's building a mill there. Kill the deer. Blood of the Hun. Yo. He could have killed all four deer. That's a mistake. That is a mistake. And people are saying that, that red is Tato. I, I'm not so sure. I, I think that Tato has more of a meta developed for this map. And I also think that Tato would have known to kill the deer. I'm not so sure. We do have some demos in this dock, though. I think best case scenario for Bleda is that he just kills the fish. Okay, those were wasted demos. So, I, again, if you think Tato's the best with demos, was that a Tato demo? I don't think so. He used two demos versus the same unit there. And here come the archers from Rolf. Rolf is hoping to counterattack. Since he has the water control, he can do so. But Blood is already here with skirmishers. Alright. Guys, the support has been unreal already today. Um, I, when I couldn't sleep last night, <clears throat> I was trying to calm down. So I'll admit, I talked to myself. Nice defense from Hrolf. I talked to myself sometimes, so I was trying to calm myself down. And I couldn't stop thinking about this, so I figured I'd... I'd calm myself down by reassuring myself that the, the games would be good over the next four days. And uh, my my goal that I said in my head that I'd be happy with was was uh, low 2,000s today, low 3,000s tomorrow, low 4,000s Saturday, and low 5,000s on Sunday. And uh, we have 4,500 people here already on day one. So on a Thursday, that's pretty crazy. So thank you guys very much. Um, I, I'm glad to see you guys have been enjoying it. I've been enjoying it. The games have been solid. I have no clue who these players are. 
And the reality is you guys don't either. <laughs> and we have some awesome videos planned and giveaways and all, all types of stuff, so. So you can see the risk of, of running into Red's base if you have archers and he just has skirmishers. But the beauty of the situation that Rolf's in is that he can hang around here. If this was Arabia, he couldn't hang around here. Bleda could chase him down. Bleda can't do that now because there's water control here. And Rolf is now running in. This is as Bleda is going for a counterattack with skirmishers. That could be annoying, but it could also leave yourself exposed, Bleda. And Bleda has to run away from his gold now. So there's a fish lead for blue. Uh, there's not a vill lead for blue, but he definitely has the military lead. You just need to get some value from this attack. You can't run in here and not kill anything because you're eventually going to be trapped. So kill as much as you can here, Rolf. And I don't know why Red's not reacting with pulling some of these weak vills away. Uh, he's lost three in total to all of this. And he- Oh, he also got T90 wooed! <laughs> There's a wolf back here. Oh, sorry, Bleda. It's a T90 tournament, man. There's gonna be plenty of T90 woos. Meanwhile, the skirmishers are here. Now, these skirmishers can kill Vils, but for the most part, it's just gonna be annoying. And the stable that Red was hoping to build here has been denied. Rolf the Ganger has a pretty big lead now, guys. He's going to click up to Castle Age any second. And he's denying Bleda's gold. Oh, another wolf. And it's attacking blue this time. See, it's fair. We even balanced the wolves in Hidden Cup 2. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that red is kind of screwed. <laughs> um, you know, as a caster, I normally try and find ways to say things that are a bit more positive, but... Um, I'm struggling to find something here. He only has 100 food. Oh, and now Hrolf has added a stable. Uh, so, sorry, um... Yeah, he's out of the stable for a few scouts and then I'll go knights. He could just finish off the game. This game ten this map tends to go to imp, but with such a big lead, I'm not so sure. It was a mistake for Bleda to run forward. That was it. He should not have sent his skirms forward. Didn't make any sense. Had he kept his skirms at home, these archers would have never got in. His fast farming could be working for him, he could have the gold. He'd probably still be slightly later at Castle Age, but not this much. And so some of the skirms will make it back. I guess it's a good idea to send forward that spearman, but what are you going to do against Knight's Blood? You're going to need a lot of spearmen. Which is not so easy to use when your opponent has some ranged units here. So, this is the norm. What, I, what I'm seeing from Hrolf is pretty much what at least at this stage, what I saw from players in the qualifiers and what I think is best. Have a fine balance of land and water control. And I, I love now a forward villager is coming forward. I love how Rolf is playing this. So he lost the last game, which was his home map. Which was probably a surprise to him. But he's definitely winning this game. And I think we're going to see some scout production from Red. He realizes he's behind. He probably knows his opponent is up. So he's going to make a few late scouts, and he just calls the GG. Now he realizes that's not going to work. I was just going to say, that's not going to work. That's the shortest game of the series, and that means we are going to game number five. Uh, the water engagement was certainly important in the beginning. Hrolf was able to win out there and gain the food from it. Uh, and then I think that his transition past that was much better. Uh, the militia, I joked around about it, but Blood of the Hunt's militia didn't make any sense. It showed to me that he was trying to go man-at-arms, and then he realized, oh shoot, I can't go man-at-arms and go water. It, it didn't seem like he was prepared for the map. Here's what's cool. This is what I envisioned with the tournament. If you add two new maps and allow home map picks, the players that prepare could be rewarded. And I think Rolf was rewarded there. Game number five will be Cup. Game number five will be Blood of the Huns map. And we'll see who will win the best of five, guys. Both these players are so good. Like, when we review this, whoever these two players are, whoever loses this, it's going to be a shocker, I think. Because both of these players are insanely good. Uh, Alright, so I do have the cheese. I thought I closed it out. 
Here you go if you want to see the achievements. Again, not a lot in it with the KD. This was a shorter game, but economically speaking, Guelph was way ahead. Go back to the civilizations, and I think Rolf has a slightly better civ for this. Slightly better. Huns, great for this map. And Spanish, not bad either. We saw Jordan 23 use Spanish, I think, during the qualifier. Um, I think both of those civs can fare well for different reasons. We'll hop into that game in just a moment. I just need some water. <laughs> I just need some water. Is it single elimination? Sure, since we have more people here, I could bring up the brackets. So uh, today we're going to cast the top four of the round of 16, and then the bottom four will be casted tomorrow. Um, so Hrolf the Ganger, Blood of the Hun, after this set, we'll do... No oh, God. Don't make fun of me. Nobunaga uh, and El Cid, and we'll move on down the list there. It is single elimination. It is random seeding. So it could be Viper versus Lear in round one. They do not know who they're facing. There's so many unknowns. So you have to be the best of the best to get to the finals of Hidden Cup 2. <clears throat> hey, that was fine. Don't, don't act surprised, okay? <laughs> um, yet again, I'm going to bring up the prize pool so you guys are aware of just how big a deal this is. $10,000 prize pool, $5,000 from Bill Gates, $3,000 from this community, and then we had uh, $2,500 from Legless Alex, who was definitely in the chat, definitely hyped. The guy was texting me about how hyped he was, uh, well, just yesterday, actually. <laughs> so, yeah, he's pumped. He's out there, guys. So it's a single elimination tournament. Players do not know who they're playing. If they beat somebody, that player cannot then say, hey, this is who I am. There's no reveal whatsoever. I think the players are still going to have good guesses, but we did our best to make sure that they wouldn't know. Even if we were to tell the players, though, I think it's fun for us as spectators and fun for me as casters. T90 official, do I also get your number if I... Do I also get your number so I can text you if I donate $2,500? Uh, for you, Boaz, it would be 2499 That's how much I like you. Ikari, thank you for gifting five subs to the stream. Thank you, Huff, Venex, Flipwitch, DJ Lion King, Joint Kicker. Thank you guys all for joining the community with the new subs. Uh, let's do this. Let's do this. Game number five. It will be cross. Winner moves on to round number two, to the quarterfinals. Sorry, the game took, a, it's a 20-year-old game, okay? It took a little bit of time <laughs> to load up. <laughs> We're fine. We're fine here. Everything's good. Get the T90 finds in the chat. All right, this game came out in 1999. We're good to go. Isn't that crazy? We're almost at the 20-year anniversary of Age of Empires 2, and we have this many people watching. That is truly incredible, as is this map. Welcome, my friends. Game number five between Blood of the Hunt and Rolf the Ganger. Man, these guys are close. Man, these guys are close. They are next door neighbors. Look at the golds for Rolf. Main gold, second gold, third gold right here smack in the middle. Oh, and Rolf's going for the lame. Blood of no pig. Rolf lamed in game one, got the victory. Is this what he needs to give him a slight edge going into Blood of the Hunt's home map? He's chosen Hunt, which is a great sieve for this. And he's stealing Bleda's pig. Now, let's see if there's any response from the players. There hasn't been a lot of conversation. There might be bluffs, or there might be some good tells to know who these people are. Well, let's talk about the map briefly. I'll zoom out as the lame is completed. There's a pond in the south, pond in the north, the east, the west. A pond control is a very important play in this. You have to get as many fish as possible. Now... The problem with fighting for more than one pond is that you're not going to have anything to defend with on land. So normally your faster civilizations like Huns or more versatile civilizations are going to try and do a bit of both, but opt more for the land, uh, specifically the cab archers. 
And I think what you see with Spanish is you see Spanish go for one pond that will hopefully be safe for them. A lot of walls and then conquistadors. I just want to check here to see if Blood has seized his pig. Yeah, he does. But whoever has the land control on this is going to be so far ahead because of these golds that are here. Oh, I was actually wrong, by the way. First gold for Hrolf, second, and then third is back here. So so this gold, these two golds are Bledas. And that's not particularly good for a Spanish player because the Spanish player... Oh, God, he's lost a villager! Oh, no, he's lost a pig. He's lost a vill. Oh, this is so bad for Bleda the Hun. This is not how he expected his home map going, that's for sure. Oh, goodness gracious, that's bad. That's bad. And the boar got a downhill hit there. I, I was just about to check. I'm not completely used to where the HP is, so I, I didn't get to see it in time. But it felt to me like it had gone down to 7 HP because the boar got a downhill hit. The pigs are just against him. And meanwhile, MBL, I mean, Hrolf, he's here. I'm sure he's feeling good. Still has his deer, still has his pig. And I'm now looking for the Dockvilles. Dock in the north for Bleda. And then Dock in the west for Hrolf. Guys, it was a joke. I don't know who they are. It was a joke. I said it because he lamed. MBL confirmed. I don't know if, if people are aware, but to all my subs out there, we added some hidden cup emotes. So we have the the T90 Doubt and Doubt's face on a cup. We have the same with Viper. We have the, the Who emote, if we're really confused as to who someone might be. Uh, and wow, even Bleda killing that sheep there when he probably didn't want to. And then we have the confirmed. So with the confirmed emotes, we will be able to confirm who people are. Monday? Now, what's this from Ralph? He must be going forward. Is he going to the north to dock? Seems like it. Now, I believe he'll run into these wolves. This is risky if you don't have your scout to protect you. By the way, since the first three days of recorded games, uh, if any of the players are streaming currently, because I know that a few might, I, I didn't want to restrict them from streaming all four days. It doesn't mean anything. Does not mean a thing. So, fortunately for T90 Babe, she avoids these two wolves. She will run into this one. Now, she has a net in her hand. She could, like, wrap it around the wolf and twist and break its ne neck. I mean, sorry, I'm getting violent here. But that's what I would do if I had a net. Like, wrap it around the wolf, go for some sick moves. She didn't need that, though. She's fine. Oh! Oh! Okay, this this actually might be... Man, I, I'm gonna seem like an idiot because I keep claiming it's a different person, but did you see how he built the palisade over the dead wolf? Yeah, all players should know that, but basically what that does is makes it so if Red has scouted that area, a Red won't see the dead carcass there. It's a little trick. And MBL does that a crap ton, but... But again, here's the thing. We see MBL... MBL is like... Basically 24 hours streaming, seven days a week. He's always online. So every single thing that MBL has ever done, we're going to be more familiar with it because he plays the game nonstop. So it's it's something that all players are going to know how to do. And uh, all players sure know how to wall. I think it's time to finally let you guys know that we invited Fat Slob to Hidden Cup 2. So... He's been practicing other maps. He didn't practice Cup, apparently, after last game, but, uh... Yep, Fat Slob confirmed. The guy was upset that I didn't give him Black Forest. But I told him, listen, man, there's a lot of prize pool money on the line. You can justify, you know, your 15 years playing the game every day. And he said, sure, so... But yeah, this is what Red needs to do if he wants to get to Conquistadors. Well, Red does not see is this dock from Rolf. And this dock is game changing, my friends. Blood of the Hun was hoping he would have a safe pond. And with a safe pond, he wanted to use the fishing food income to go Castle Age. He's going to lose all of his fish here. That's a huge deal. That sneaky dock from Rolf will change the rest of this game. See, he is completely open. 
you'll notice. He is completely open, but he will have the fish. We'll see, though. We'll see. If Red's still able to get to the Castle Age Conquistadors, uh, could be pretty insane, but it's not looking good for him with the food. Only 300 food when he's halfway to Feudal Age, and he's hoping for 800. If Red would have had the fishing ships alive, I think it still would have been difficult for him. Oh my god, did you see that? <laughs> uh, she she made it back from building the dock and the wolves were chasing her. That's funny. Guys, I actually want to show you this. Do you guys see a bird anywhere? Oh, check this out. Ready? Go to Gaia point of view. This is the bird's line of sight. It's incredible, isn't it? <laughs> to see Gaia's line of sight. Follow the bird. All right, enough of that. Enough of that. Sorry. I get distracted sometimes with these features. So uh, if your opponent's thinking about making conquistadors, and I I'm not even sure what the play is going to be for Red because he's not fast castling anymore. But uh, if he's thinking of making conquistadors, it's always good as Huns to make archers and then go into cav archers. It's just a bad situation for Bleda. The fact that he's farming right now is bad. And this was his home map as well. This was the map that he thought that he had a game plan for. He lost the pig because of the aggressive play from Hrolf. And it's not looking good for him. Double palisade walls, that's great. But here there's single palisade walls and Hrolf will start battering his way through here, I imagine. Now there is a dock in the south for Bleda. And uh, as far as I can see, Bleda has scouted the blues not there, so maybe he can get some fish going there. But because of the fish, Hrolf the Ganger is on the way to Castle Age. I think he will lose his Vil. Actually, I think the Vil will even survive here. Let's see. Wait for it. Yeah, Red, you can't commit to the killing this. Red, you can't commit to killing this. Yo, Bleda, the Hun. Yeah. Sloppy stuff. I don't know why he's sending this villager in here. He probably feels like... He just probably doesn't know what to do at the moment. And now he's stonewalling, so... There are what I would consider risky picks when it comes to sieves. And the risky picks are picks that you have to do a certain thing with. With Huns, you could lose the pawns, for example, and still go land and be fine. With Spanish, you can't, you don't have that luxury. With Spanish, you have to get safe fish, and you have to fast castle conks in this matchup. That's just how it works. And oh my god, I wasn't kidding about it being Fatslop. Robo, why did we let Fatslop in? It was a joke, man. He has to stonewall. I mean, I'm, I'm joking here, but he has to stonewall. Because if he doesn't, he's dead. The winner of this tournament gets $3,000. And even just making it to the quarterfinals gives you $1,000 guaranteed. Or not quarterfinals, I'm sorry, semifinals, that's wrong. All my quarterfinalists are going to be angry at me. So, you know, there, there's a lot of money on the line. And there's a lot of prestige on the line. A lot of fun on the line. And Red is going to try and do his best to stay alive in this game. It's not looking good for Bleda. Now, I want to let you all know that with my bracket prediction, I did have Hrolf the Ganger winning this. I think. I'll have to double check after this. Monday? My bracket is still alive. If, if, Hrolf wins. I don't know why I'm calling it too early. Obviously, I'm biased. But the Cav Archers are being masked, man. Uh, there's just so many good things going for Blue. He had the galley here to deny the villager from sneaking a dock up. I'd say the only bad thing for Hrolf is that he doesn't have the largest numbers of cav archers yet and that uh, yeah that's about it and I guess he doesn't have that southern pond but he could easily get that there's not this scout is not going to stop any villager from docking there Hrolf the ganger sees the stone walls he's breaking his way in here and he's also going to dock on this side, which is such an intelligent move. Something that Bled of the Hun... Does he, does he not see it? He doesn't see it again! He doesn't see it again! 
So it could, it's like two and a half pawns currently for Hrolf. Uh, could be three as long as he makes some navy over here. And this is the most important one as well. This is the most important one. He could also transport units around, which would be kind of funny. Yeah, getting war galley. I think this is the play for blue. You already have the cav archers controlling the map. Try and take the pond away. And red doesn't see it, man. This is a disaster. This is a disaster for him. For his home map to fall behind this much is just not good. He does have fish in the south. That's great. But my goodness, he's going to lose a lot here. That said, though, I think that Rolf probably needs to wait a bit. Maybe wait until you have two and then you kill them all. If you just send it out after one, you might only kill half of them. But nah. This was the doc researching gill nets for Bleda, so he can't even respond with a fire galley or two. He was just counting on that never being disrupted. Now, I don't see how he couldn't realize this was happening, though, because he knows that blue broke in there. That's no secret. And oh god, now blue is going for the southern pond. It's looking worse and worse for Bled of the Hun, who is 11 villagers behind. As far as I can see, he's going to lose all of his pawns, all of his fish. You just don't come back from games like this. You, you just don't. That is the reality. This is a game that Hrolf should win. If Hrolf, if Hrolf throws this, it will be a huge throw. <laughs> a huge throw. If you're curious just how much fish is on the map, actually, this is a bit late. Probably could have done this earlier, but I'll zoom out real quick and double click them. Uh, there's about 3,500 food. See that? And 17 fish remaining on the map. So that's a lot of food to be gained. Plus, you could always fish trap. But these fishing ships... They're done. You're not fishing there anymore. Blue's investing into farm eco, and he's going to have a fish lead. And he has the military lead on land. Look at him surrounding his opponent. He has he has a spear here to see what's going on. He has an archer here to see what's going on. And he has cav archers on the front. And he has to know now that red's behind. He can see the score. There'll be no surprises here. And I think red will try and go for a few sneaky knights, but... My goodness, this is going to be too little too late. Hmm. Everything that Rolf has done in this game has been solid. I loved how he denied his opponent's docks and was able to sneak his own up. There's just two of them that changed the game. And and it was going to be it's always going to be easy after he took control of all the pawns. The only risk then is just not over committing to water, but he's committed to lands nicely. Even walling up a bit, just to make sure he's not surprised by anything, because he does not see this area on the map. This is just domination from Rolf. When you're ahead with fish, and you're ahead with lands military, that's domination right there. And normally it's three pawns to one or something. He's taken every single one. And watch the resource count. Tons of wood, food, and gold in the bank in comparison to what Bleda has. That means a faster Imperial is probably what we'll see for Rolf. And guys, this is one of those games that if it was game one, Bleda the Hun probably would have tapped out of. I think the reason he hasn't tapped out is because he knows that he will not be competing anymore in Hidden Cup 2 if he loses this. Getting scale barding out. I like the thought process to try a raid. Uh, he does know that blue has his cav archers forward, so maybe the raid is possible. One, two, three, four town centers producing villagers. Twelve vills queued up in those four town centers for blue. And it's 87 vills to 67, and there's 18 fishing ships for blue. <laughs> oh my god. Man, I haven't seen an economy difference like this since the last time I played Dave in a 1v1. Okay, that was that's not true. That's a joke. It's not fair because Dave's not here to defend himself. But you can laugh at it anyway. Make me feel good. Thank you. <laughs> Don't tell Dave. He's at work today. He's called off work tomorrow so he can cast with me. Don't tell Dave. Stop clipping stuff. 
I'm on to your tricks, chat. So the knights will have chain barding armor and husbandry, so four pierce armor uh, definitely could kill some villagers, but can they kill 20? The cav archers are on the way back to defend. The blue has the villagers to lose at this point, and I think he knows that, and he'll run forward to build a castle. And map control is always going to be crucial here. Uh, just thinking back a little bit, I like how red's spreading the knights out, but... Blue's going to track that, and and Blue took the initiative with the strong early lame, which worked well for him. Uh, Red was sloppy and lost the villager. Blue took the initiative with the sneaky docks. I mean, Blue has done everything better. Hrolf the Ganger deserves this position. And with this castle placement, he could break right into Bleda's base and bleed him dry. Bleda suddenly does not have a lot remaining after sending in those knights. It is 35 kills for Hrolf the Ganger, and it is 8 kills for Bled of the Hun. That's how dominating Hrolf has been in this game. And he's on his way to Imp, and Bled is not anywhere close. This game's over. Might not call it yet, but this game's over. Bled of the Hun is going to be out of Hidden Cup 2, despite playing incredibly well. And Hrolf the Ganger with the comeback, man! The comeback! He was down 2-1! to one. He should finish this game off, for sure. What do you think, guys? Is anyone slightly heartbroken that Blood of the Hun is out? Because Blood of the Hun has played really good. It's one thing if someone loses and you could tell they didn't have the skill to move on. But with this... I mean, I'm going to be heartbroken regardless because there's so many top-level players and someone has to lose, but with this man, Blood of the Hun played really good in this series. He, he just got outplayed. It's it's a competitive tournament. And, you know, he's, he's trying to all-in with knights. He might even be thinking about skirms because he's adding the archery ranges now. But it, it wouldn't surprise me to see the GG come in once Rolf hits the Imperial Age. Oh, petards, let's go! Zoom in on the explosion, boom! Here come the cav archers. The horde of Rolf the Ganger approaches. Nice quick walls. But, you know, once Imp comes in, it'll be rams, it'll be trebs. It'll be a variety of different things that Blue can't deal with. Uh, Doubt? Is this Doubt? Doubt? I think the game might have ended there without a GG, actually. That would make sense. I think I think the game's over. I didn't see a GG. So, Red did call the game. Hrolf the Ganger moves on. I'll bring up the bracket here and show you exactly uh, what Hrolf should be expecting. And he doesn't know who the people are, of course, but we could at least see who he could potentially face. Here's a look at the brackets. Uh, you'll see Hrolf the Ganger will move on. And he will face the winner of the next set. Nobunaga and El Cid will be playing next. Uh, yeah, I, I, since it was a recorded game, maybe we missed the GGs. I'm not sure if it was some salt or what, but the game is certainly over there. And we will move along to the next set in just a few minutes, guys. Let me update the scores. Let me bring up the achievements for you and get a, a few things out of the way. But, I mean, is anyone surprised that Rolf won the game after taking all four pawns on a map where you need to get the pawns? Should not be a surprise to anyone. Complete domination in game five. More food, more wood, more stone, and more gold. He deserved it. This is the player to look out for. I need to bring up my bracket and see what my prediction was. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, this is important to me. Um, let's see. Uh, I don't have it saved. I don't think, anyway. Oh, no, I do have it saved. No! I had Blood of the Hun winning! No! I thought I chose Rolf! Oh, God, man. Ugh. Well, my bracket's busted. Frickin' Bleda. Yeah, so I had I had Blood of the Hun winning that, and then I have El Cid winning the next set. I have King Alfonso winning. I'll bring I'll show you the brackets here. Um, 
I have King Alfonso working his way past Subutai, God's Own Sling, Bleda. <laughs> Freaking Bleda. Bleda, I have Bleda to win against El Cid too. My bracket's done. And then uh, Attila the Hun in the finals. So, rip. Other people probably have better brackets than me. <laughs> uh, guys, the next set will be coming up shortly. We're going to take a short break here before we get the next set started. Uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you guys for being here and hanging out. I hope you guys have been enjoying the show. I thank you for the love, whether that's a, a new sub to the stream, a, a gifted sub, a donut, whatever. I'll get back to that list here in just a